Well, good evening to everyone on our on our uh, meeting tonight. This is our fiscal year 2022 budget town hall. Hello, and thanks for watching Cecil TV. I'm Doug Donnelly. Kicking off the public input portion of the 2021-22 county budget process, County Executive Danielle Hornberger held a town hall on Thursday, 218, via Zoom. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our County Executive, Danielle Hornberger. Good evening. As Dan said, thank you all for joining tonight for Cecil County's fiscal year 2022 Budget Town Hall. After a brief introduction by Dan Schneckenberger, followed by Ms. Hornberger, Finance Director James Appel narrated a slide presentation of the county's financial present and future. Appel reported that based on projections after the second quarter ending December 31st, Revenues from personal property tax are down $2.2 million and income tax is down $2 million. He said the income tax decline is due to the governor's waiving of taxes collected from unemployment payments. But Appel said that the county's expenses were over budgeted by $2 million, leaving a $2 million shortfall to be drawn from the county's reserve fund. So the, um, the administration is well into developing our 2022 budget and we're going to do our best to continue to improve our county with the existing funding we have and additional revenue from throughout thoughtful development and again with the residents of the county in mind first um, we do know more unfunded mandates coming from the state are going to be coming the biggest changes in education will be imposed by the Kerman Commission. I'm sure many of you heard about that. As the Zoom event turned to public comment, viewpoints were mostly expressed as either continued or increased support for existing programs or by urging the administration to reduce spending and lower taxes. This report ends with a few of those anyway, comments. And my two other children are attending Elton High School and Bow Manor Middle School. I point this out to say, that I have a vested interest in all the schools, especially since my children are part of the school system. As adults, we see the value of what a good quality education can bring, such as career opportunities and a chance to make an excellent salary. I want this for my kids and I want this for our students. One way to ensure that happen is through funding the schools. Thanks Cecil County for its funding support. And I do ask that the executive committee highly consider keeping the library funding a priority in this year's budget. I do not want any new tax increases. We've seen increases over the years, and I am going to ask the county executive and each person on the council to go in and find cuts this year. Um, we are dealing with a pandemic. We've got people out of work. We've got Kerwin coming. Again, we have no idea what that's going to cost. But at this point, I'm asking that, you know, we've all got to tighten our belts. I look forward to the days when the doors of the Cecilton Library open to the public, um, but even in its current capacity, it's maintained an essential and necessary community staple. So at the library together, we engage, we learn, we grow, and I am very hopeful and believing that it will uh, continue to enrich our lives. While we absolutely love our little Northeast libraries, we frequent patrons, we were well aware of its shortcomings that resulted simply due to its small size and lack of space. We feel so proud and grateful that our Cecil County leadership acknowledged those needs and provided support for a new Northeast library to be constructed. We understand that the new facility will include a second floor that is dedicated to raising the 21st century child, as well as many other wonderful resources for all ages, such as skills training, media, technology, and computers. Having these tools readily available for residents with knowledgeable staff there to offer timely guidance and feedback will have an extremely positive impact on the future of our Cecil County community by empowering our citizens through access to information and possibilities. I'd like to, uh, the budget to take all taxpayers into account, uh, not just special interests. Uh, we are tired of million dollar turf fields. Um, absolutely astounded at that $22 million library. Like Harford County has an eight or $9 million library. Everybody down there said it was way too elaborate. Uh, we spent two thirds of a million dollars resurfacing tennis courts in the past. Uh, and 
I think most taxpayers are tired of paying the Narcan bill. Uh, if you poll the majority of the citizens, you know, I think you would find that to be true. And I think you would find that uh, most county residents, more than anything else, would really like to have some tax relief. Um, thank you. Hey, James. Implore the administration to avoid any cuts to CCPS, CCPL, or CISO budgets. Um, this administration was elected with the promise of tax cuts, and this sounds easy. However, ease does not always correspond with wise. It is often chic to, uh, to debt government programs. Uh, in my experience, anything which can be labeled a social program is constantly asked to streamline, to do more with less. And with moderation, this is certainly justified. However, when this is prolonged, it can easily castrate organizations and severely hamper their effectiveness.